Welcome. Today we're going to do textured swirly pots like this one. It actually took me quite some time to figure out how to make it this swirly. But today I'm going to share everything I learned with you, all the little tips and tricks to make this. So uh, let's go throw some pots. I've always loved to do textured pottery, not the least because uh, it makes glazes look so much more interesting. That is, if it is a glaze that sort of breaks in a good way over ages. That's what we call it when a glaze change color depending on how thick it is. This is a good example. This is uh, one of my favorite glazes called the uh, Folk Art Guild White. And as you can see, Maybe you can guess it has a lot of iron in it. So where the layer is thick, it becomes white. But then when the layer is very thin, it becomes brown. And because of the texture, the, the, the glaze, when it's heated up and it melts, it kind of falls off the edges, the top of the edges, and creates a thin layer and makes it brown. And it kind of highlights the textures on the pot. But what you can also see on this pot is that actually did all the, the, the textures on it, and then I expanded it from the inside, but it didn't swirl so much, so it didn't, it didn't bend around. The lines did, you know, bend a little bit to the side, but not as much as I like. If you look at this pot, I don't know how easy it is to see here, but if you look at this pot, you can see that it swirled almost, I mean, a quarter of, uh, of the size around, so I managed to make this more swirly than uh, the other one. Not as much as this one, for example. If you look at this, the swirl is going, it's almost a whole, a whole circle around the pot. So this is swirling a lot more. So um, what is the difference? How did I make this so swirly <laughs> and the other ones less swirly? That's what we're gonna talk about today and I'll show you what I found out. Over the years, I have made a lot of these uh, textured vases, and they're all based on the same principle. First, I throw a cylinder, more or less straight, up and down, and I leave enough thickness to cut out whatever I want. If it's very deep textures, of course, I need a thicker wall. If it's very light textures, I don't need so much. And next step, I do the texturing on the straight cylinder, and then I expand it from the inside. Because, of course, <laughs> once you have texture on the outside, you can't touch it. So you can only work from the inside. And yeah, that does take <laughs> a little bit of getting used to. Because normally you would be able to push from the outside and the inside and shape your form. But with the texture on the outside, you can only shape from the inside. So that means you can only expand, you can't extract. So, but try it out. It's, it's actually not as difficult as it may sound. For some of the pots I've been doing with this technique, I don't mind if it's burly or not, because it's just the texture in itself. And I mean, for example, this one that I mentioned before, I wouldn't call it a failure. It, it looks nice, it got nice texture and, and it works. It could also have been nice with a lot of swirling. So um, that's what we're gonna try. So um, what I found is that, um, well, in my first research <laughs> and experimentation, to try and make them more swirly. What I found is that the drier they are on the inside when you expand them, the more friction you create and the more torque, the more you, you, you push uh, or pull the clay around. So the drier, the more torque, the more swirly. But having it more dry, if you ever try to throw with very, very little water, or even dry clay, it's difficult because your, your hands get, get stuck. And when they do, you, you push the clay out of shape and oh, it's just easier with water. <laughs> and um, usually I would just, you know, add a sponge and take it from the inside or a, a rip or something. But I found that if you can, you know, again, it takes a little bit of practice, but if you can, can expand it dry, you will get more torque. So, um, so this one that I also showed before is made that way. 
so by having it very dry inside, I actually managed to get it like a quarter or something around, which is nice for this texture. But if we want to go the whole mile with uh, the, 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 the swirling that goes a whole full round, that's not enough. At least I haven't been able to do that just by applying more or less uh, water. So then I started to uh, do some more research and see what the <clears throat> is wrong. Why can't I make these? Because I saw all the potters, I saw all the pots being made like that. And I finally found out that there's another factor too. And that is the shrinkage or the compression in height. So now we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm not going to be so concerned with making it dry, but instead I'm going to make it a lot higher than what I'm going to end up with. Probably going to be something like this, and we're going to end up with something like this. Because when you push it down, I'm going to show that in a second, when you push it down, you are creating a lot more torque, and it's going to swirl around like crazy. So um, enough with all the torque, let's throw. I'm going to start out by centering a clay ball. Oh yeah, keep in mind that when you do this, depending on how much you take off, you need a lot more clay than you would usually use for a vase or a bowl at the same size. I would say something like 30%, 50% more than you would usually use, maybe even double up, depending on the, on the texture. Uh, but don't worry too much about the weight. Textured vases, textured bowls, textured pottery will weigh more. But what I do is I start out with what I know is too much. And then if it's a bowl, I can always trim it on the inside. I know some potters will tell you never to trim bowls on the inside, never to trim any pottery on the inside. I don't care, you know, it works. And especially for very textured pots, if you um, if they're too thin when you throw them, first of all, there's a risk that when you do the texture, you push yourself through the wall. But also, if it's too thin, it becomes too fragile and you can't push enough. So when you do it, when you do your texture and you do apply some pressure, you pressure, you push it out of shape. By having thicker walls, it's more stable. You can still have it <laughs> not wobbling around without after the texture. And then you can just uh, trim it down to the thickness that, I mean, also when you have textures, there's a limit to how, how thin you can make it at the thin places. But then when you when you trim the thinness, is there a word for that? Thinness? Anyway, when you trim it down to the thickness that you want, um, you get the perfect pot out of it. And I don't care if someone sells, say that you shouldn't trim the inside. It works for me. Anyway, let's move on with it. I'm just going to use, I think, what it is, a three pound of clay or something like that. So we're not going to make a huge one uh, now. The, 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 the technique is the same. And I'm not going to spend too much time explaining about centering and pulling because I, you've seen that before. So uh, let's move on. Actually, I just weighted this clay ball and it's about four pounds. So, so about almost, not entirely, but almost two kilos of clay. And it started making this sound. There's probably some, some clay left in there. Oh, you must excuse me. <laughs> so now it's pretty much uh, centered. So I'm going to make it pretty narrow because we're going to expand it and I want it as narrow as possible. Still need to get my hands in there, but um, and as tall as possible with the thickness of the wall that's maybe a little more than a centimeter or something. So now we have a narrow and very thick walled uh, cylinder. It's a little bit wobbly. Uh, I had a problem on the way. It didn't attach well enough to this uh, bed. It's a new new kind of bed that I haven't gotten used to completely yet. So, 
helped. It survived. Um, just gonna undercut it here a little bit. Put a foot. I'm just gonna scrape off some of the slip. It doesn't matter for this that it's a little bit wobbly because it's gonna be, I mean, very, um, very dramatic <laughs> anyway when we're finished with it. So um, don't be so obsessed with that for this type of pot. Anyway, just gonna get rid of some of this slip. It's always nice to keep a sort of clean surface. <laughs> I'm not very good with that, but I try and I try. So. Now, uh, you can cut out any way you want. I'm going to use a cheese cut. Uh, you could also use a, any kind of loop tool uh, to cut it out. Um, actually, I think it's so thick, this one, that I'm going to use a loop tool. So I'm basically going to make it in one go. I'm going to leave a little bit up here because um, I don't want the texture. I want a piece up here and the rim to be um, free of the texture. I'm going to cut them quite close to each other. I mean, you can do it in many different ways. And of course, different way of creating the texture will, um, will create different results. I also sometimes used uh, wiggle wire that can create some interesting um, results as well. But this, I'm sure, will be okay. So, now we have it all the way around. Um, now, depending on how sharp you want these uh, edges, you may want to clean it up just a little bit. Um, if you don't, <laughs> you're going to end up with some nasty, uh, very sharp, almost deadly um, uh, edges here. And um, I mean, unless you want to kill someone, you may want to <laughs> you may want to uh, just unsharpen it a little bit. So you can do that by um, by just removing some of it and then um, just soften it a little bit with a sponge uh, like this. Don't do too much because you still want you still want edges. But um, yeah, this is just whoops. This is gonna make it a little less dangerous, <laughs> so to speak. I'm also gonna clean up the edge down here, with the foot. So, I think that looks good. So now comes the magic. And as I said, it doesn't need to be dry inside for this. And um, the trick here is that I'm going to hold on to it so it will swirl when I do it, but also by pushing it down, I'm aiming for something like half the size, it will, it will force it around. So let's take a look and see how it goes. You see already now how much it's uh, it's pushing it around. So, shaping this is a lot more difficult than um, probably any other part that uh, I tried making. Um, but um, let's see if we can get something out of this. I'm trying to push it out a little bit at the bottom here. Because again, we can't really touch it and you can see this got completely <laughs> out of shape up here. That's fine, we'll cut that off. 
So, I was beginning to look a little more like a face. Oh, boom. Something like that. Let me see. Sometimes it can be easier to use a rib. Um, expanding these. So, beginning to make something here. So, I think we're getting close to, um, to something I like. I uh, think maybe I still want to cut off uh, the rib a little bit here. Just to make it a little more even. I mean, that's a design issue, whether or not you care. In this case, I just want it to be a little more even. And I also want the top here to not have so much texture. So we're gonna get rid of that with um, a rib. So. Just gonna smoothen this. Dry it on the inside. There's a lot of water now. So, just gonna smoothen the rim. I mean, it's it's gonna be wobbly <laughs> because it, it, it's a very brutal way of um, texturing and expanding a, a pot, but um, it's also very interesting, I think. Um, just gonna end up uh, doing a little bit of wet trimming on the foot. And um, I think that's about it. That was the first one. As you see, the swirling goes all the way around. So we got a lot more swirling. You, you would have uh, a cheat with just um, expanding it in a normal way. So that was the first one. Let's make another one. I just had to take a quick break. Um, so in case you wonder why the light have changed, that's why. We have a wonderful summer in Denmark right now. So um, I had to go and get ice cream with my daughter. So, sorry about that. But uh, let's do another part, and this time I'm gonna do it a little bit wider so you can see the difference in, um, in the making, but the principle is the same.
I like to make a little bit of an indent here. It's nice for the foot and also that's where I'm going to start because I'm not going to take the texture all the way down. Also in the top here, I'm gonna, now I'm going to mark it this time. Just make a small scratch here so I know this is where I'm going to stop. So this time I'm going to use a different loop tool, this one, just to show that... Uh, oh, actually, I think for this one I'm going to use the cheese cutter, <laughs> just to show a completely different variation. You could also use a, um, a, a, what do you call it, like a wiggle wire, this one. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like a wiggle. You could also use that. Um, now we're just going to use a cheese cutter. So, um, Gonna use this to make equal size cuts. <laughs> it's always a bit tricky. Um, so, like that. And again, what I found is that, I mean, you can try and do it very even and uh, very nice, but it doesn't actually matter if you, I, mean, I like to be a little wild and um, for that you can cut it wild. So um, it works for me. Maybe you want something different, but it's just to demonstrate how I do it. So again, I'm going to just clean it up a little bit down here. Just going to take the edges of the texture so it doesn't, I don't get these uh, very sharp edges. It can almost like feel dangerous when you, when you touch it after it's been, um, been bisked and glazed. So now we do have sort of a, a nice texture here. So the same principle applies, even though it's a little bit wider. I still want to push it down and push it out. It is by doing both that you get the swirly effect, but the more you can push it down, the more swirly it's going to be. So let's try and see how that works out for this one. See, it is getting swirlier <laughs> than it would if I just um, if I just pushed it out. So let's see if we can push it further down, get a bigger effect. So you see, now it's actually it's not. I mean, because it wasn't as tall as the other one, but still. Get quite a lot of soil. It's it's what is it? Two thirds of a round or something. So I think that's pretty good. So now I just want to fix the rim a little bit. And then I'm going to use my. Uh, I have this. Uh, semi-soft, I don't know if you know the mod tools, uh, uh, ribs, but the, the green one is like semi-soft. Then we have the red ones and that are much soft and the blue ones that are more firm. But this one is nice because it kind of, you, I can kind of push it into a board like this. So I very often use it for these um, types of uh, pots where I expand from the inside. It's sort of a thick rim that I got on this one, sort of on purpose. <laughs> I 
I say that now. It was. So, I think we're closely getting there. I just want to get the button a little better. Push it out just a little bit. So, yeah. So, I think that looks pretty good. Just want to take some of the water away. I don't want to touch this too much because the more I touch it, the less, um, the less textured it's going to be. I'm just going to fix the outside of the rim a little bit. It's not going to be like a perfectly uh, even round. I mean, it is wobbling a little bit. I don't think it's too bad, but it will. <laughs> and uh, so I still want to. I still want to smooth the rim. So I like. I like the contrast between having a super smooth um, rim and then heavy textures um, on the sides. On the outside, on the inside, I like it to be smooth and nice because, I don't know, potentially I would have a salad or some hummus or something in this. And um, I want that to be you know, clean, food safe and all that. So um, I think this looks good. So the only thing left is I'm gonna push in my finger down here just a little bit. And there's two reasons for that. <laughs> Let me just hold on a second. One of the reasons is I like, you know, to have sort of a foot down here. The other thing is that uh, now today we're focused on throwing these uh, swirly textured parts. But once you get to the glazing, and it's always a good idea to think about the glazing in advance. So when you actually throw your pot, you think about how you're going to glaze it. When you have uh, heavy textures, the glaze is going to pool in the lower areas and because it's pooling, it's more likely to run. So by having this, uh, um, when you push your finger in here, you're going to make a small, like a barrier. So when the, when the glaze runs down, it's not going to run down to your seal, or at least it's less likely. So, um, so it's just um, thinking about when you, when you do your pot um, from the very beginning, how it's going to end and how you're going to glaze it, that can, um, can help you. Now, this is a good example of um, a pot that, because I used almost two kilo and it's, it's a rather small pot, so it's way too thick. But on the very thin areas where, where, it's, uh, where, where the, uh, the texture is thinnest, it's actually not that thick. But what I will do is, uh, I won't have time to show you that today, but what I will do is I will let it dry to like a leather hard stage and then I will trim the inside because now I'm finished with the texturing. So now I can actually take away a little bit of thickness from the inside. Of course not from the inside or from the outside that will destroy the texture. And that way I can make it as light as possible. It won't be super light. It's a textured bow. It won't be super light, but it will be lighter than what it is now. And um, it's not, I mean, in this case, the, the, the inside actually looks very good. It don't always <laughs> do these textured uh, bowls, but in this case, it actually looks nice inside. So the only reason I'm doing this, the only reason I will do the trimming is to get some of the clay off so uh, it won't be so heavy. So um, I think that was it for today. Let me just take it off here. So. I think it looks okay. With the right glazing, I think this is gonna, gonna be awesome. Anyway, that was all for today. It was a sort of a short video, maybe two months talking, too little pottery, but I hope you still got the point about how to make these super swirly uh, bowls or vases, whatever you wanna, wanna create. So just to summarize, the trick is to make it at least twice as high as what you're aiming for. And then when you expand it, also push it down. By pushing it down, 
you're going to create much more dramatic swirling. So um, that was all I had today. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, please subscribe, share, comment, and uh, come back next Sunday. I usually have a new video around 5 p.m. Central European time. I know this one was a little bit late, but I am actually on vacation, but I decided to make the video for you anyway. So um, I just hope you enjoy the summer as much as I do, and um, see you again next week. Thank you.